Okay, this is the Zebex Sled Track 6000. We have a lot of treadmills here. Actually, can you pan the camera to see how many treadmills we have? Don't show Brandon, he's kind of ugly. Yeah, look at those. But this differs from every other treadmill in a few different ways, so I wanna show you how it works. First off, it can do pretty much everything any other treadmill can do, but really what I think is unique, and the reason I wanted to review it for you, is the fact that it can also mimic sled training. And not just forward sled training, but also backwards, sidewards, upside downward. No, I'm just kidding, just backwards and forwards. But this is how it works. So basically, if you wanna do a sled mode, you click the button, you then start. It has 1500 watts of resistance. I'll go into more detail what that actually means. It's obviously different in pounds and most of you meat heads can't even count two plus two. Even though you can do 45 times three, I don't understand that, but I get it, I'll talk to you later. Then you can use it like a sled with these handles like this. So this is just the basic rating. I'll crank it up to 100. And I'm not like, it's a lot of resistance. But another thing that's unique about it is it has this movable handle. So that's in the fixed position. If I pull this out, if it comes back, you can use that just like this to push it up. But really what's unique are these bands that are here, which honestly, when I first saw them, I thought it was kind of gimmicky, but after using them, it makes you feel pretty good. So this allows you to then use resistance in such a way where it's moving like a normal sled would. So as you put in more resistance, it moves. It just makes it mimic like a real sled. Or you can also, because it's a bi-directional belt, you can go both ways. So if you're into knees over toes type training, you can do backwards sled drags. Okay, that shows you a few other things it can do. There's actually a lot more, but let's get into the review. Hey friends, this is Coop from Garage and Reviews. Today I'm reviewing the Zebex Sled Track 6000. Kind of showed you how it worked, but I actually want to walk through what I think about the different features. Now we've done quite a few treadmill reviews. I've done a roundup. If you'd like to see more of them, let me know in the comments. Also, if you'd like to see basically a review on every treadmill that's out there, you can check out our other channel, Garage and Reviews Everything, where Lindsay reviews treadmills all the time. Trust me, I hear about it, she's tired of it. But <laughs> there's a lot to go through. Today I'm gonna to walk through what I think about the treadmill, I'll tell you what I like or what I don't like. I'll be honest about it there's some things that i think are just really wonky and goofy on this and i'll let you know that but this was sent to us so we could do a review and if you'd like to purchase it check out the link below the like button where you can do so and the company will pay us a small commission but won't increase how much you pay okay the reason i really want to review this because I don't do a crazy amount of treadmills on this channel. Most of what I do is strength training because that's mostly what's interesting me. But I do have a treadmill in my garage gym and I also do a lot of things that this is made to do with other apparatuses. And so because of that, I was like, ah, I wanna get this in, try it, and then we'll see if it's any good and worth recommending or worth reviewing. Now, I'll start with the kind of the modes because I think is what's most interesting. So basically there is a standard treadmill mode. There's six different modes, but there's a treadmill mode. This is a bi-direct directional belt, which means it can go forwards or backwards. Most treadmills, as you can expect, only go in one direction. I will say one of the things that's both positive and negative on this is there is just a lot of stuff going on. There's a lot of modes and anytime there's a lot of modes and a lot of horsepower and a lot of complexity, I worry about the longevity. Now we've only had this for, I don't know, a few weeks, a couple months. So I can't really speak to how this is going to operate over like years. That will take a follow-up review, but I will just say up to this point, we haven't had any issues. But just understand, there is complexity in this, and because of that, I just wanna speak honestly, more complexity equals more potential problems. That said, haven't had any problems yet. The treadmill modes are good. They're just like any other treadmill. Basically, you can go forwards or backwards. It is kind of cool that it can go backwards if you wanna do backwards walking without turning around. I mean, I do backwards walking on my true form all the time. It's actually a great quad builder and just like nice for proprioception and just to change how you're moving and what muscles you're using while moving. So if you wanna do that while you're facing the screen, this is a, a treadmill that can do that. Most other treadmills can't do that. But that also means that this can do a decline. Now, this is one of my like, I don't know, harps on this machine. Of a typical treadmill, especially one like this that's made for athletes, one feature that I think is like really defining and one that pretty much an athletic treadmill should like really do well in, and that is incline. So this is made so you can decline because it's got a reverse drive belt, so it can work in that way, but the incline is only 10%. So 
That may not matter to a lot of you, but most treadmills that are out there, 10% is like, eh, it's just not that big of a deal. It also takes a while to get up there. This is like a really high powered, overbuilt. Actually, the build of it is very nice. It's very heavy. Nathan was just remarking on that because how heavy did he say it was? 350 pounds. So it's a very heavy treadmill. It's not a fold up treadmill. This is made as like an athletic treadmill. So I would think that it would be able to have a higher incline, but also a quicker incline. And that's like one of my call outs on it. But it can do a normal treadmill functions. The real function that I think is most unique is the one I showed is the sled function. The sled function is using the resistance from the motor to provide wattage of resistance. And the way that they basically illustrate this is in wattage. This is kind of difficult, especially for people that are used to just lifting weights. If you've never say like, I don't know, used a, used a bike where you're like calculating your wattage and like that's an important thing to you. It's a metric that a lot of cyclists are using. What I'll just say is like 1500 watts is actually really hard. It's very significant. It would feel similar. It would actually feel heavier. It actually feels heavier than the torque tank's top range. So if you used a torque tank, which is actually the sled that I use most often, if you've used one of those, I actually have the MX, which is like their big daddy guy and has the most amount of resistance. This thing produces similar or more resistance than that does, but you don't actually have to move. Like you don't have to get the thing out. You can just do it in your domicile, wherever this is sat, in the same place that you're doing your walking just by the touch of a button. That's why this is so interesting. Now, I really like the handles that are on here. They're very nice. It's like a good, comfortable position. It would be nice if they had them so they were a little bit lower because sometimes you do low sled pushes, which is kind of cool. The bands are on here. I showed, I like the idea. One thought I had is like, what happens if those bands break? It's just a band, you know, it's just like, uh, I don't know. It does feel a little bit gimmicky. I will say when I use it in the sled function, I'm using it with the bands because it does make it feel a little bit more like a traditional sled. But one of the treadmills that Louis Simmons at Westside Barbell used to use was a sled without a motor. And it was just a way to get GPP training in. And this allows you to do that, but increase the resistance. Now, one thing about it is when you're sledding backwards, which is something that I like to do often, it's like a knees over toes guy type thing. If you're into knees over toes guy type training, honestly, this is one of the best treadmills for that. Although there are a couple others that are out there, the tip bar guy and also Bells of Steel, both have options that I'm gonna review. If you'd like to see those, make sure you subscribe and let me know in the comments cause we'll get to them. But this allows you to do backward sled drags. One thing I will say, on that the handles like in doing backward sled drags they just feel a little bit uncomfortable it's like a movement that's like uh you can do it but they didn't really make the machine so it'd feel comfortable while you were doing it just a call out and then the other thing i would say is the honestly my favorite way to use this on sleds is it to attach a dip belt and then to attach a cord of some sort like a strap to the other side but there's no hooks to attach it so you kind of have to like Jerry rig it so it works. Basically a unique way so you can add a belt so you can basically use it like a sled. I like using it that way. It feels very comfortable and especially for backward drags because it gives you some sort of resistance that feels a little bit more comfortable than the handles. So a couple options that you can do. Now the top end speed on this is 12 and a half miles per hour. That's not like crazy. There are treadmills that go much faster than that. So I wouldn't buy this if you're thinking like, ah, oh, I just want the fast treadmill that's out there. But I will say most of you probably can't run 12.5 miles an hour at a very long pace. So 12 and a half should be fine. And they also have another mode that is a limit speed mode. To me, this felt like they were just wanted to say they had six modes instead of five modes, because maybe that sounds better. The limit speed mode limits your speed. Now, why I needed a mode to limit my speed when I could just press the plus or minus button, I don't know. But this is good for like rehab, or they say for like elderly people that just don't want to go too fast and it limits, basically it's like a child lock for really old people <laughs> that prevents you from going too fast. <laughs> Overall, what I'll say is it's a treadmill that does treadmill things plus the sled function. And really what you should be asking is, is the sled function actually good? Does it work? And is the value versus other treadmills worth it? And I'll speak to those. The sled function works. I really like the sled function. I wouldn't recommend this treadmill for somebody that wasn't using the sled function because it is gonna be a little bit more expensive than other treadmills, but really it's not that much more expensive. It's definitely less than commercial options, even though it feels like a commercial build. I'd also say many of the commercial options from like Nordic Track, the Nordic Track commercial options, which aren't actually commercial options. Those ones, this is a better build quality than those as well, and it's cheaper. But really what this is unique about 
is the fact that it can do the sled function and has the bi-directional belt. And both of those functions work extremely well. And it's at a price point that honestly is pretty good. Now to the display. I'm not gonna speak a lot on the display because there's really not a lot to speak on. The display is just that, a display. There's actually no buttons on the heads up display. The buttons are in like a center console. And also there's two on each side of arms. The one on the left one is for incline. The one on the right is for speed or increasing the resistance on the sled. You have a plus and minus button so you can increase that way, but there's also quick select buttons. The quick select buttons are numbered for the speed of the treadmill not for the resistance for the sled. So it was like they just decided to use those buttons as well without labeling them. It's very annoying just saying that. You should label them if they do something. It's very annoying, but if you press 12, it'll go to 90 resistance. Why? I don't know what the multiple there is, but that's how it works. So a little bit annoying, but after you get through the kinks, like you're gonna be fine with it, or you can just put like a sticky note there or something just to let you remember. Which by the way, spending this much money and having put a sticky note, a little annoying. But the heads up display does allow you to see pretty much every metric that you'd wanna see on every typical treadmill that's out there. There's actually no touch screen or like movies on there, which I personally like. If I wanna watch a movie, I'll like bring up my iPad or my phone or something. I get people wanting that, but this is isn't made for that. This is really an athlete's treadmill, but because you're not having to spend the money on like the subscription, not having to spend the money on the huge touchscreen, more value is placed in the actual mechanics of the treadmill. And that's why I think this is actually a better value than a lot of treadmills that are out there because it's actually a more robust build and a better overall treadmill they're not just putting in the tech features to make you want to buy it. And the tech features that really I would rather leave to Apple on my tablet that I can just place on there then have a separate device that's gonna break. It does have a heart rate monitor on the side. It's a little goofy, you put your hands on it. Honestly, you could connect a Bluetooth heart rate monitor if you're really wanting to track heart rate. But if you just wanna quickly test it, you can put your hands on the handles and it works fine. One question would be on the handles. Really like the handles. One thing that's nice about them is you can put them all the way to the front of the machine. Right now where I have them, they're actually at the back of the machine. So to get them out of the way, if you're wanting to do sprints, you're gonna to wanna to put those all the way to the front and they'll be out of the way enough because the deck's long enough. Now it does limit your space. Like a, basically if you didn't have those, you'd have more space obviously because you'd be able to use the full deck. But I haven't found in use, they actually get in the way when you lock them out of the way. So overall, what do I think about it? I think if you like the sled function, I actually really like this. I'm actually trying to figure out if there's a place in my garage that I can place this. Right now I have a true form. That's what I use if I'm doing steady state stuff. The reality is most of the time now, I just go out and walk my dog outside or if I'm doing sprinting, I'll sprint up my hill in the backyard. But there are times where it's just too cold or like I can't leave the house because my wife is gone. <laughs> I got in trouble for that one time. Do you guys ever do that? Leave your house when your kids are home and your wife's gone? I didn't realize you weren't supposed to do that. But for the price, for 3,200 bucks, when you compare that to other options, this isn't a budget treadmill. They make a 5,000 version that's a little bit cheaper. If you want a more budget-friendly treadmill, there are many that are out there. If you want an athlete's treadmill that is priced appropriately and you're not paying like an egregious amount, like what you'd find for those that you see in an actual commercial environment, despite this having specs and build quality, it honestly feels pretty similar. I actually think this is a really good option. I will say the warranty on this leaves a little bit to be desired. It has a five-year warranty on the frame, like all that, and then two-year on the parts, but nothing on the labor. It's just like, ah, uh, Treadmills break, especially one that has 1500 watts of resistance that you're gonna be pushing against it. That's one of my biggest worries and call outs is like what's the longevity and durability gonna be on this. It does come with a warranty, but it's on the frame. This frame's not going anywhere. This frame is so beefy. It's really gonna be the motor and the belt and those sorts of things that break on treadmills. So if you're using it on a home gym environment, may not be a big deal, but just something to consider. So all that said, I actually really like this treadmill. It has some quirks, has some weird things, but this is my review. What do you think of the treadmill? Are there any other treadmills out there that you'd like to see? Specifically some of those that you can do some more things on them. Having a treadmill that only does treadmills when there's lots of other things you could add to them in a home gym, I just think I re really prefer the options where I have multiple things I can do on them. Okay, this has been Coop from Garage and Reviews. I will see you. Well, I can't see you right now. You will see me next time. Peace. <laughs>